tell us what, what exactly this means for um, the UK's relationship with Europe and what is really at stake here. Okay, I think the important thing to remember is that for much has been made of the divisions in the Tory party over this, but fundamentally the majority of Conservative politicians actually agree with David Cameron's EU policy. This is a policy that he laid out in January, and that is that the that they, he will try to rene renegotiate the Britain's relationship with the EU and then if elected into office in 2015 will hold an in-out referendum in 2017. Mm -hmm. So although there will always be a minority of Tory backbenchers who won't be satisfied until David Cameron's policy is actually to leave the EU, it's important to remember that this is fundamentally a squabble over the timing of the referendum rather than over actual substance of the policy. So we, are we we're sure, are we, or you're sure that this is a minority? Because I know that your organisation does have a pro-UK in the EU stance. You, you, you lobby for the UK to stay in Europe, although with a renegotiated relationship, if you like. Um, but are we sure then that this is, this is only a minority of Conservative MPs? Because as days go on, we hear more and more MPs, whether they are Tory grandees, you know, names from the past, or whether they are cabinet members, we hear more and more of them coming out and, and, and objecting to what David Cameron is doing. It's a minority who say that they would want to leave the EU right, uh, right now. Uh, it, the majority say that they would want to leave if the status quo were to remain. But actually, if David Cameron is successful in renegotiating the UK's relationship with the EU, then a majority would hope to stay in. Why would it be disastrous, to use your word, Lisa, if, uh, if, if we did leave the EU? Why couldn't we put together individual trade deals with, with each and every country. Yes, it would take time, but surely that's possible. Why do you use the word disastrous? Oh, I think that's a strong word to use. Um, um, I certainly wouldn't say that it's disastrous. Mm. However, it's important to remember that um, the UK actually benefits greatly from its membership in the EU. And although some would say that the UK should just leave the EU. Actually, when we examine the alternatives, um, the other models that are available, so the, the Turkish model, the uh, Norwegian model, these aren't models that are actually very beneficial to the UK, that they don't suit the UK very well. You say well. we should make use of our available tools to further our, our own interests, and um, you, you, you believe that if we did so, we could help the region itself boost output by nearly 300 billion euros. H how would that happen? This is a report that we recently published. This is to liberalize the services market. Of course, um, our relationship with the EU is based on the single market, which is based on four main pillars, goods, services, people, and capital. Now, while the single market for goods has been um, achieved, for goods has been uh, achieved for services, it hasn't been. So, and this is, a, this is a field where the UK could really expand into the EU, and this would be very beneficial to both the UK and the EU.